How are you testing wastewater in regards to COVID-19? And what are the results that that process is yielding right now? Yeah, our company is analyzing wastewater, uh, looking at the concentration of the novel coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 in wastewater because people who have the disease shed the virus in stool and it makes its way into the wastewater where we then can collect it and test it uh, to look at how many people are infected in a particular area. Uh, our preliminary results in Massachusetts show that um, there could be many more people infected with COVID that we know today, according to the confirmed clinical cases. And the discrepancy between our numbers was uh, kind of orders of magnitude uh, greater than what's been confirmed. Interesting. So are, are you sharing the data um, that you are yielding right now from some of these sites with governments, with others? And, and if so, how is it helping to shape some of these decisions that uh, states and local, local municipalities um, are, are making as they look to reopen the economy? We share uh, the results of the wastewater analysis directly with the wastewater treatment facilities. And many of them are now communicating those results up to their governor's office, their mayor's office, uh, people really leading the response so they can have a new piece of information on when to reopen cities. Um, the wastewater data we're collecting already represents about 10% of the US population uh, that is being sampled every week. And it's a completely new type of data, you know, independent from all of the testing happening at hospitals to inform uh, where to deploy resources and ultimately when to open cities again. Now, th this is fascinating. And I've got to ask, based on the type of information that this type of testing can provide over time, why isn't it something that, that we should just be doing constantly in every city all the time so that when something potentially arises, we see it early and are able to track its ebbs and flows from the very earliest point? We imagine that in the future, uh, every city in the U.S. and in the world will have this type of infrastructure and this type of technology in place and will be constantly on the lookout for new outbreaks and using it really as an early warning system. In fact, uh, it has already successfully provided uh, information to countries fighting poliovirus outbreaks. Uh, you see the poliovirus in the wastewater before you see it in the clinic. And I think that's what we could also be providing here with COVID. Uh, if the virus uh, kind of comes back in a second peak or if it ends up having a seasonal pattern, we will see it first in the wastewater before we see it in the clinic as well. When you see uh, study findings like the one uh, out of California that suggests the infection rate's actually 50 times what we think, um, how anecdotal really is that? What, what conclusion can we draw from that broadly? And do you think it's statistically sound? Um, so the California uh, preprint uh, is still being reviewed by experts in the space. Um, I think that in general, any new type of survey or technology. Um, we, we just need to be careful as to how we interpret it. But I think in general, um, what we're learning from all these different efforts, like random testing or serological surveys, is that uh, there could be a large proportion of the population that is asymptomatic and that the outbreak may be way more uh, kind of uh, big that, that we're considering today. So I think it's worth to start putting together all these pieces of information. And our team is actually working with a group of experts, both in science as well as public health, to understand how to piece together all these sources of data into one model that allows our leaders to be empowered to open cities um, in a smart way. That's such a key point right there. And I think it continues to uh reflect back on why things like effective, successful antibody tests are, are going to be so key to this process as well when you talk about the possibility that there's a larger population that's asymptomatic. Finally, Dr. Mattis, just to finish this up, the cost of each test, 
What would it take for some of these different localities who don't already use your services to, to implement them now? Yeah, so our campaign is pro bono, actually. Um, we are funding the work through grants we have, as well as um, a new round of funding that we have raised, led by a Boston-based fund called The Engine. Um, but the work, uh, we're only asking wastewater treatment plants to support with the shipping cost, which is about $120 per sample. And, uh, you know, I want to encourage anyone who wants to join our national campaign to do so. Right now, we have over 100 wastewater treatment plants uh, participating already, and we have about four to 500 ready to start uh, whenever our internal capacity grows. So please uh, go to our website and um, just get in touch.